Hello everyone, welcome back to another Express Entry Live Q&A, but as always, we're answering questions about everything related to Canadian immigration. I'll see you in a sec. And yes, indeed, we are back. I am Canadian immigration lawyer, Mark Holfe, and this is the Canadian Immigration Institute. We are broadcasting on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, I think. So if you are watching on those and the feed is actually going out, sometimes none of them like the fact that I'm broadcasting live on all the others, but uh, this is the best way I can to, uh, you know, the best thing that I can do to try to reach as many people as possible. So let's see who we've got here. looks like uh, at the beginning, um, we've got some people that have dumped a few questions in. So let's take a look and see what we got here. Uh, Sherry's already asking, what draw do you think they'll have today? That's a great question. You know, if we look at the rounds of invitations here, we can see that the last one that they did was on February the 2nd. Well, today's February the 15th. And if they are true to form, we can likely expect that something's going to happen today. And with any, with any luck, um, they will do a round right while we're doing our live right now. So we'll see. The last draw was 3,300 invitations issued, but it was very unique. Never before had we ever had a federal skilled worker only draw. So speculation last week, is the minister going to start his new targeted draws uh, some people were saying that they had intel that absolutely was happening last week. Well, Minister Fraser here, let's see if we've got him. I'm trying to remember if I do have the minister. Oh, maybe I don't have him anymore. Used to be around. Let's see if he wants to join us. Nope, he doesn't. I've got too many, <laughs> too many things going on here. Looks like the, uh, um, yeah, he won't be joining us today. Anyways, as we, go, as we go through this process, uh, one thing that we know is that there's no guarantees. Oh, we got a few things going on. Looks like my computer's a little laggy. Okay, bear with me if I, I'm not able to pull up all the questions as quickly as possible. For some reason, we're lagging a little bit here on our live stream. But yes, as far as the, as far as the draw itself, and if we flip back over to here, and I think maybe now I can pull the minister. There he is. Okay, he is here. Okay, will Minister Fraser do targeted draws? That's the question. And only he knows, only he knows, don't you, minister? He's kind of hiding away there. <laughs> okay. I'm having too much fun with this. So, uh, Will, what do you think? Like, I'm asking you guys now, what do you think? So post in the comments, wherever you're tuning in, when, like, what do you think is going to happen today? Is it going to be um, another FSW only draw? Will the minister surprise us all with a new target of draw? Will he do what's very much overdue, a CEC only draw. Like, why would he do an FSW? Why? Like, minister, why would you do an FSW? Yes, stand up here. <laughs> why would he do an FSW when there are so many CECs languishing in Canada? Well, I don't know. Only he knows in his department because they don't release the intel on those decisions when it comes to rounds of invitations. So we're going to have to see here, you guys, what ultimately happens um, today. Maybe we'll be lucky. Maybe. We'll just have to see. Okay. All right. So let's see what else we've got. Make sure, as always, when you're tuning in here, that you post where you're tuning in from. I love to see how far the, the reach extends out uh, across the globe. And um, let's see what some of the people have uh, have to say here about what we can expect so Promise, who was the previous winner of a free access to the Express Entry Step-by-Step -step course, that was, uh, that was a little while ago, wasn't it, Promise? Uh, was it two weeks ago? I can't remember. Those of you who are unfamiliar with the Canadian Immigration Institute, uh, this is where we house our Express Entry course. And uh, this course right here, um, Promise, uh, she was daring enough to join me in a live stream when we were testing out this new feed. And she won uh, free access to this comprehensive step-by-step -step course to Express Entry. And the link is below in the, um, uh, in the description wherever you are watching this video. Okay, let's slip back here and let's see what else we've got. So CEC says promise. Let's see who else. Let's see what the other thoughts are. Manzur, he's saying CEC. 
Sherry Blackman is saying maybe non-specific. Yes, yeah, so no program specified draw. Sheeta is saying PNP. Well, you guys, there's no consistency there at all, is there? <laughs> and then Mr. Smash says, good to see you, Mr. Mark. It's good to see you, Mr. Smash. Thanks for connecting in. Okay, so Sheeta says PNP today, CEC or FSW tomorrow. All right, well, we'll see. And Eric's tuning in from Cameroon. Welcome, Eric. Great to have you with us today. Let's see if we have any, any other votes. Um, oh, uh, Promise says, yes, it was, and I'm enjoying it. Thanks, Mark. You are very, very welcome. So, um, yes, so what are some of the updates? We always talk a little bit about updates before we dive right into the questions. And uh, the reality is there really hasn't been too much. Um, right now, I'm going through a little bit of a debate with a client. And maybe you guys can share the answer to this because I want to I want to open it up to you guys. And I've been having a little bit of a debate with a client because, well, someone online told her that her license as a as a licensed practical nurse is enough to get the extra points for the the um, certificate of qualification under the comprehensive ranking system. So let me show you what I mean. So this is the debate that we're having. So you can see the comprehensive ranking uh, system criteria. This is the page that breaks down all of the various points that can be awarded. And if you scroll down here and we go down to the very bottom, there's the breakdown. We'll zip through all the breakdown and all the spouse. And then we get to the last section, the skill transferability factors. Well, most of you know, you can get up to 100 points here with these skill skill transferability factors, depending upon where you sit. Most people are getting their bonus points from having two or more post-secondary and then a CLB9 in their language. That's where they're getting 50 there. And then the other ones are getting uh, 50 points, uh, typically from, we scroll down here, from foreign work experience, three years or more, and that same really good, let's go down one more, right here. See, they're getting their points from three or more years of, um, I went a little bit too far, three or more years right here of foreign work experience and the CLB9. So CLB9, you can see why it's the bomb. It opens up the door for you guys to get up to 100 extra points, provided you have three years of foreign work experience and provided that uh, that you have um, the, the two or more credentials, essentially one at three years at least, and then, um, and then another post-secondary credential. OK, and so three years young, uh, three years or longer and then uh, a second one. So the question, though, becomes right down here, if we scroll down. Right here, so certificate of qualification and you can see trade occupations. So with good official language proficiency. So if once again, if you have at least a CLB seven. In all four official language abilities and you have a trade occupation certificate of qualification, then you can get the points. And so then the question becomes, what is a trade occupation? Well, guys, this really falls under the Federal Skilled Trade Program. And to get the 50 points, if we go here and we, we look up, um, let's see here, uh, let's go to the ministerial instructions, M-I-E-E-I-R-C-C. -E -E let's see, let's pull up the ministerial instructions. I know this is boring, you guys, but this is this is a dilemma that I faced. And so the client is convinced because the way she enters her information into the express entry profile um, that she gets those extra 50 points awarded. So let's type in certificate of qualification. OK, right here. And you can see once again, um, this is the section that breaks down um, uh, disclosures to provinces. Let's jump down to the actual points being awarded. So you can see here, this is comprehensive ranking system factor categories. And you can see down here, they have as it a combination of, of a certificate of qualification and the official language. That's what, uh, that's specifically what we're referring to. But you can see here, the points that may be issued to a foreign national for their certificate of qualification in a trade occupation issued by a competent provincial federal authority, that is the only guidance that IRCC gives, except for when you're actually going into your profile. And uh, when you look into the profile and you, and you look up what it's referring to by certificate of qualification and trade occupations, there's a link. And that link takes you to the Federal Skilled Trade um, Program. 
it takes you here. So when you look to the Federal Skilled Trade Program, um, it specifically identifies these skilled trades for the Federal Skilled Trade Program are organized under these groups of the NOC. And just to you know, remove any confusion, licensed practical nurses are a 3-2, their major group 3-2. And you can see here we have 7-2, 7-3, 8-2, 8-3, 9-2, 9-1, 9-2, 9-3, 9-4, 9-5, 9-6, 9-7, 9-8, 9-9, 9-10, 9-11, 9-12, 9-13, 9-14, 9-15, 9-16, 9-17, 9-18, 9-19, 9-20, 9-21, 9-22, 9-23, 9-24, 9-25, 9-26, 9-27, 9-28, 9-29, 9-30, 9-31, 9-32, 9-33, 9-34, 9-35, 9-36, 9-37, 9-38, 9-39, 9-40, 9-41, 9-42, 9-43, 9-44, 9-45, 9-46, 9-47, 9-48, 9-49, 9-50, 9-51, 9-52, 9-53, 9-54, 9-55, 9-56, 9-57, 9-58, 9-59, 9-60, 9-61, 9-62, 9-63, 9-64, 9-65, 9-66, 9-67, 9-68, 9-69, 9-70, 9-71, 9-72, 9-73, 9-74, 9-75, 9-76, 9-77, 9-78, 9-79, 9-80, 9-81, 9-82, 9-83, 9-84, 9-85, 9-86, 9-87, 9-88, 9-89, 9-90, 9-91, 9-92, 9-93, 9-94, 9-95, 9-96, 9-97, 9-98, 9-99, 9-100, 9-101, 9-102, 9-103, 9-104, 9-105, 9-106, 9-107, 9-108, 9-109, 9-110, 9-111, 9-112, 9-113, 9-114, 9-115, 9-116, 9-117, 9-118, 9-119, 9-120, 9-121, 9-122, 9-123, 9-124, 9-125, 9-126, 9-127, 9-128, 9-129, 9-130, 9-131, 9-132, 9-133, 9-134, 9-135, 9-136, 9-137, 9-138, 9-139, 9-140, 9-141, 9-142, 9-143, 9-144, 9-145, 9-146, 9-147, 9-148, 9-149, 9-150, 9-151, 9-152, 9-153, 9-154, 9-155, 9-156, 9-157, 9-158, 9-159, 9-160, 9-170, 9-171, 9-172, 9-173, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 9-174, 
of 2021 and you submitted your profile and you were um, granted an invitation to apply on say September, I guess it'd be the second, right? You've got September 1st covers all of September of 2022 and October 31st, if that's your start date, covers all of October, at least according to the system. So you'd get credit for almost two additional months. Um, and if you submitted your application and they went through and assessed it, you know, I think they realistically, um, you could get your application rejected for not meeting the minimum eligibility for the program. So you can see the, the challenge. So I don't put a lot of stock in the fact that, well, if I entered the information into the profile, it works. But I'm going to be talking with that client later today to sort it out. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Shanaz says, hey, Mark, good morning. Is it mandatory to upload birth certificates for FSW candidates post-ITA? No, it is not. It doesn't form a part of that. Um, the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program, what are my chances? Knock 11200. Well, <laughs> that is the biggest mystery of all. We just do not know where they're extending the, um, the, uh, the notifications of interest under the express entry stream. Um, obviously, individuals that are in Alberta now are starting to grow. So people that are working in Alberta on LMIA-based work permits, um, post-grad work permit holders, the, the numbers are starting to increase. And when they have enough people inside Alberta, they don't need to extend um, expressions of interest outside. But if we look at the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program and we look at this stream, let's pull it up here. What I'm going to do is we'll go back and we will pull up. Do, 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 do. They've got all the streams and I've got a bunch of distractions here. Let me just, I want to pull up the, um, I want to pull up the results. So hang tight for one second here. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Let's see what we've got here within our system. Just give me one second. There we go. Wow. Took me a while to find it, you guys. Here we go. So let's take a look at the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program. So let's shrink this down a little bit. We've got too big of a screen here. Okay, so let's take a look here. So um, nomination certificates, it, it shows kind of where they're at in the process. Um, their fiscal year is March 31st. So you can see they'll uh, further, um, no further certificates will be issued until January of 2023. So they haven't updated this. So let's zip down a little bit further. <laughs> AIP does not provide status updates. No one provides status updates. Okay, so the Alberta Opportunity Stream, Alberta Express Entry Stream, and then volumes by application. So these by far are the most common occupations. And just to be honest, that's not necessarily a good thing. <clears throat> if they have an over surplus of this, these occupations, <clears throat> it's going to mean that's going to take longer likely for your application to be adjudicated. The express entry draws January the 23rd. So we've got oh, a little while ago, they did a very small one. And you can see how small these are, okay? So number of notifications of interest, 154, 46 January 19th. So it's small. And yes, the comprehensive ranking system, you can see these numbers are low. Why? Because generally speaking, these people are already working in Alberta um, or they have the whatever skills that they feel are necessary. So... It, you can see they don't list the occupations in here um, within these draws. We don't know exactly where they're targeting. Um, they have, you know, they provide some uh, kind of overview, um, you know, generally with the express entry draws when you go to the eligibility page. But really when it comes down to the, you know, to, to what they're, the factors they're actually looking at, it's somewhat of a mystery. It is. Um, let's just zip down here. I'll see. Okay. Okay, so here we can see um, <laughs> they, you need to have a minimum of 300, but these factors are the ones that increase your chances. And recently, they made an announcement in Alberta about having family in Alberta. So you have a parent, child, brother, sister who's a permanent resident living in Alberta or a Canadian citizen living in Alberta. You're a graduate of a Canadian post-secondary institution. So this, these are things that increase your chances, okay? Um, uh, you have an Alberta job offer you can see there's a reason why that is number one on the list. And then French, they toss in as well. And then these are things that decrease, okay? Your profile expires in five months or less. Your primary occupation um, is on the Alberta stream for ineligible occupations list. A high volume of submissions across the AIP stream, see? 
high volume of submissions across the um, the Alberta Advantage Immigration Stream. What is that referring to? It's referring to the list of of occupations um, that are on the you know the top the top list. These ones right here. Okay, so that hopefully. <laughs> Gives you a little bit of an overview. I know I don't usually dive as deep into Alberta, but hey, it's my it's my hometown, so we shall see. Okay, let's see here. <clears throat> okay, so she just says got admission, applying for a study permit before post grad work permit expires. If I happen to get an ITA before decision is made on the work permit, can I cancel it and apply for a bridging open work permit instead since I got an ITA? Well, this is something Sheeta that I always will ring the bell. And I'll tell you to slide over to our website right here and book a consult because this is something I never want to give people advice, specific advice on whether to do A or B unless I've actually had a chance to understand everything about their situation. There may be very valid reasons um, why someone would want to do that, um, but it all depends upon the facts. And I would be reckless if I was giving legal advice directly to people on what they should specifically do in their situation. Um, remember there's flexibility. The bridging open work permit used to be restricted, um, to only people whose work permits were expiring within four months. And in some programs like the TR to PR pathway, that continues to be a component, but the bridging open work permit that's general for the, the economic programs. Now you can even restore to a bridging open work permit, which you couldn't before. So <clears throat> you can be, um, yeah, there's, there's a number of different factors at play. So there is flexibility, Sheeta, but I recommend that you book a, a, a consult. Okay, um, good morning, Romero. Good to see you. And I'll give you a shout out and a little bit of an applause here. If it chooses to uh, <coughs> kick in for me. So this is my first time attending the live. Great to have you here. Um, let's see what else we have here. Um, Okay, he says, uh, I just have one question regarding common law partner. I'm already here in Canada as study permit. My agency didn't told me anything about common law partner. <sighs> I hope your agency that you used were regulated immigration consultants. And if they didn't tell you about common law partner, I'm assuming you're talking about a work permit for your spouse. Well, um, it's not easy, okay? When you're separated, it's not easy. But once again, Romero, same story. Um, I'll ring the bell here if it chooses to ring. Wow, I'm really banged up. I'm really backed up here. <laughs> my poor little computer is saying, oh, there's too much going on. Um, book a consult, my friend. Then we can look at that and we can sort it out. Okay. Uh, Lima, good morning to you. Um, and Amit says, good to see you as always. Good to see you as well. Okay. Um, all right, Lima says, any Mark, any news regarding the processing of postgrad work permit extensions, public policy? What if we do not get an answer after the work authorization expires in May? The minister has to do something about this. <clears throat> you know, the, the fact that they have not made any decisions, <coughs> excuse me, have not created pathways is really concerning because all they're doing is playing a game of kicking the can down the road. So with these programs, <clears throat> all it does is just exacerbate the, the backlogs, exacerbate the pathways. And when they're doing rounds of invitations, and just a reminder, <clears throat> excuse me, if you guys see, if you see that the round of invitations is released, let me know and we'll talk about it immediately. But <clears throat> without pathways and when they're doing 3,300, you know, invitations for federal skilled workers, I could just, I'll be honest, it just that draw just didn't make any sense to me. Um, so yeah, I hope there's pathways and, and obviously you guys have to, to think about backup plans. And that's what we do in our office all the time with our immigration consultations. We talk with people and sort out exactly what options might be uh, in, you know, in play to provide backups in case, because you just can't trust IRCC. You can't trust that they're, they're just going to, um, you know, create some program that allows you to be able to uh, obtain permanent residence in time before your status expires. So there's a whole bunch of things going on and absolutely I would not want to be in a position where, well, essentially um, you are, the only way you can stay in Canada is if they create some further policy after all of the interim authorizations expire in May. So really, really, yep, need to be really, really careful. Okay, Eric says, I have a misrepresentation problem to the US. Can I apply for a study permit to gain skills and help my company here? Eric, this is absolutely one that I would say book a consult. 
And the reason I say that is because misrep is serious. And ultimately, what's happening in the U.S., um, if there's misrepresentation in the U.S., it depends upon the nature and degree and what happened. Um, is it a, cl a classic case? And I have a lot of these consults, you guys, that are you know trying to remain on OPT or whatever after you complete your studies in the U.S. And there's all these sketchy, crooked companies that take $200 from you to issue a fake job offer. And then people are submitting those um, <clears throat> to U.S. immigration. And then eventually the company is discovered and, and shut down. And then everybody who used them are hunted down and basically enforcement action is taken against them. So if that's the case, Eric, you know, I highly recommend that you, you book a consult so we can sort that out. Okay. Um, yes, KRS is there any update on targeted draws. Remember the moment you guys hear anything, uh, just let me know and we'll immediately pull it up and see if there are any changes whatsoever to the rounds of invitations. And so right now, if I refresh my page, let's see if we've had any updates. Uh, nope, no updates yet. <laughs> now that could be because I have to clear my cash, but I've got uh, Igor and I know you guys out there. Um, if there is a draw, you will let me know. It was kind of fun last time because it was, uh, you know, the draw was um, released early enough for us to catch it right here on the live. Okay. Um, Gagan says, <clears throat> is self-employed work can be used towards settlement funds for the OINP? Gagan, this is another example. Um, it, when it comes to settlement funds, okay, and proving your foreign work experience, each of the programs across the country are, they have their own rules, right? Um, some provinces don't require settlement funds. Are you inside Canada? Are you outside Canada? Um, Gagan, do you have a a notification of interest from the OINP. Which program are you going through? So this is one of the challenges that I have uh, sometimes with these questions is because they're not quite specific enough for me to tackle them. Okay, let's see here. And so the question is, I don't know, <laughs> is the answer for that one. Okay, um, okay, Lima says, is submitting reference letters from employers that are detailed sufficient without pay slips? Well, we know within the instructions of IRCC that they they say that uh, pay slips are required if available. So technically speaking, your application is not going to get rejected if you submit just a really comprehensive uh, reference letter. And for those of you who, um, I'll just flip back here to my Canadian Immigration Institute. And uh, this is the, the course that promise, and it's live right now, guys. You can, you can access it. And I strongly encourage you to consider um, purchasing the course because it has <clears throat> over, it's literally over 10 hours of content um, associated with it. And there are uh, just, there's every single aspect of express entry is covered, including a specific lesson that's on records of employment alone that, and there's sample documents. There's a whole bunch of things in there. Um, checklists, uh, tools, um, you know, that you can give your employers to help make sure that those letters are complete. But in your situation, uh, Lima, yes, you can submit. And if it's a recognizable employer, one that's easy, easily verified, you know, then they're typically not going to be as concerned. Um, but I always look at other options is, do you have bank statements that show, you know, an, an electronic wire transfer of funds? If it's an automatic uh, deposit into your account, do you have that? So, <clears throat> um, yeah, that's typically what I look at, but no, it's not mandatory. That was a good question, Lima. Okay. Um, Here's another great question. Dr. Shiva says, hey, Mark, the OINP recently conducted a human capital priority stream inviting doctors and dentists without any job offer. Do you think Bill C-19 had categories specifically for doctors as there's a huge demand in Canada? Why not? In my mind, if health is number one on the list, they don't limit it to nurses. Um, and clearly there's a shortage of doctors as well. So why not? That's entirely possible. Okay, uh, let's see here. Kathan says, I am working for a Canadian employer on my post-grad work permit. At the same time, can I work for a foreign employer remotely? Also, can I claim points for both experiences, foreign and Canadian? That is a great, great question. When you're working <clears throat> in multiple occupations, when it comes to counting points, and you're working for two at the same time, IRCC only counts 30 hours. So in your situation, I would never file an application um, where both of those work experiences are occurring at the same time, even if it's Canadian and even if it's foreign. 
the system um, is not designed for people to work two full-time jobs and get credit for it. Um, they basically state for the, and you're basically, you're referring to, um, I'm looking here to see, uh, you haven't distinguished which program uh, for both foreign, foreign can, yeah. So understand, are you going through the Canadian experience class? Um, and then the foreign work experience is being used to claim the, the three or more years. This type of a situation with two people working full time for two different companies, that is extremely rare. And personally, you, you could very well submit your application and IRCC, and this is one of the gray areas, and I'm glad that you asked this question, Catherine. Um, it's entirely possible that you, um, you, you submit your application <clears throat> and, um, and you get points for both. But at the end of the day, it is not designed for people to work and get credit for working full-time for two occupations, regardless of whether it's Canadian or um, foreign work experience. So my position on this, and, and I have not seen case law on this issue, is that that type of a situation is not something that, you know, that IRCC would, um, you know, would provide, I guess, bonus points for. Um, could the system accept it? Well, I guess that's possible, just like I talked about with the federal skilled trade. But I would be very, very reluctant to do that, um, just specifically given the fact that every, every hour over 30 hours is not counted. And you need to show that you have worked. Um, and remember, you're telling me full time here, right? So um, let's see. Well, you haven't said full time either. Wow. You know what, Catherine? I recommend you book a consult and we can look at this in detail because I need to understand more about the situation you're describing. So you're working for a Canadian employer. You don't show how many hours here. Um, can I work for a foreign employer remotely? You also don't show how many, um, how many hours or whether it's full-time or part-time. I made that assumption on your, uh, with your question here. Um, yeah, Kathryn, this is something that, uh, I think you need to book a consult for me to get more information so I can understand because it's a difference. Let's say two people, the, the rules specifically allow for people to combine their work experience, um, towards the federal skilled worker program, for instance, um, working more than one employer at the same time outside of Canada. So if you're working 15 hours in one and 20 in another, well, that's above 30. And if it's in the same knock, if it's uh, paid, um, uh, yeah, and you're, you're hitting the, like I said, the 30 hours, you're, you're, you're going to be able to combine those to meet the minimum threshold. But once you start to exceed it, that's where they cap it. So in your situation, working in Canada and working for a foreign, um, a foreign company, if you are working full-time hours in both, then, you know, in that situation, then there's, there's a possibility that they're going to cap it and not count over 30 hours. Uh, when, you know, and I don't even know if they're in the same occupations either. Are they in different occupations? Um, so all of those things play a role. And um, so it may be possible, Catherine. It may, but I definitely need more info. Wow, that was some question. Okay. You guys are really bringing it today. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um Let's see. Okay, we got a super that popped in here. Let's see if we can find it. Okay. Okay, so this is um, Odili. Odili says, I have an open work permit and my husband has a closed work permit. Okay. With our current status, is either of us allowed to have a single hustle like a YouTube channel or an Etsy shop and earn money from it? Okay. So in Canada, if you're working in Canada, Anyone on a closed work permit, that means specifically that it's closed. You're usually restricted by um, everything from employer to occupation to geographic location. That work permit would not allow someone to open up a side hustle. Okay. Um, now, ultimately, you know, YouTube channel and revenues that you're gaining, it's, it, it gets into a muddy world, but I would never do that. It could be seen as working outside the confidence of a work permit. Now, if you're teleworking and you're working and you're paid by a, an employer outside of Canada and you're here on a visit and you're working remotely, you know, temporarily while you're here, you know, there are examples of that. And the International Mobility Program and the, the Temporary Foreign Worker Program has guidelines on what's considered to be work in Canada. Um, and some of those activities like volunteering to help, you know, family when you're staying at their at their home. 
uh, to watch kids or something like those kinds of activities are typically not considered work. Um, but someone who's on an open work permit, it's just that you can do whatever you want to do. You, you, you can subject to, you know, if there's medical requirements or things like that in an area in which you're working, some open work permits will be restricted if you haven't obtained an immigration medical from, medical, uh, from working with small children or in um, healthcare settings. So that's those are the restrictions on some open work permits. But yeah, that's that's the scoop. All right, let's see what we got next here. And we'll, we'll just zip through a few. <clears throat> uh, let's see. We'll try to get to some people I haven't connected with yet. Let's see, we'll try to get ones that are benefit to everybody. Okay, this one, I'll just pull this up here. So Chiquita, I recommend you book a consult. So you've tried to fit it all into the space limit, and I don't think I understand what you're talking about. So submitting, is it a U.S. immigrant visa form with biographic data without executing the visa process? No show. I replied to stat question that no prior visa refusal equals no show, no adjudication made correct. You got to book a consult for me to tell you if that's going to be a problem. Okay. Um, okay, Syed says... Um, Based out of Ontario, currently CRS of 470 and falls under CEC category. Any idea of FSW draw coming down till 470? If not, when can I expect a CEC draw? Those are the biggest questions. And if we had Minister Fraser here and we asked him when will there be a CEC draw, I'm not sure if he would tell us. In fact, I know he wouldn't tell us. So if he wouldn't tell us right from the minister's mouth, it's going to be very difficult for us to predict. And there was a time when I could speculate and I could kind of guess. And, you know, I would expect that there will be a round of invitations today. Now, ultimately, whether the minister officially dives into the world of strategic draws or not, I'm not sure. Ultimately, people have to qualify through one of the economic programs through Express Entry. We haven't seen a federal skilled trade program draw for a very, very long time. So ultimately, we're in a position where it's, um, it's yeah. That there isn't a foundation and there isn't enough data to be able to accurately predict, you know, there aren't any patterns. And uh, at least at this stage, we're, we're kind of in a, a waiting period. So one thing I can tell you, Syed, is that uh, 470 is really low now in the modern express entry era. So if you think about it, to qualify, um, well, to get 469 points, you need to have a CLB9, which is 8777 on the IELTS. Um, you have to have three years of foreign work experience. You can't be older than 29 years old. Um, and um, yeah, you have to have a master's degree. So if the, all of that super high human capital only amounts to 469, you can see how tremendously competitive it is. And if you go back and we look at the rounds of invitations and, and what we've seen in the past, you can see how truly high the rounds of invitations really have been. So let's slide over here. And so to get down to 470 points, so you can see here, 490 was the last no program specified. That was as low as it has gotten in this modern era, I guess we'll call it, okay? All year, effectively. Obviously, we had a string of PNPs. But as you go forward here, yes, this dropped to 489, but there was a ton of people at 49 that didn't get drawn. We know that because of the actual tiebreaker. And you can see the tiebreaker was a very, very short window. It was March 29th, which basically meant when the round of invitations, it was people who had submitted profiles from basically February the 2nd of 2022 and March 29th. So everybody that submitted after that whole year were all at 49, didn't get a round of invitation, uh, you know, didn't, didn't receive their ITA. And so when we look at all of these things, you can see, and then if we just flip back here, and obviously these numbers have changed a little bit, we'll go back one more, you can see down to 470, there's like 20,000 people that were in the queue, 20,000. So plus everybody above. So the likelihood of it getting down to 470 is, is it's going to take major draws and a lot of applications and you know, French has really affected things. Work experience in Canada is affected because there's so many TRs transitioning to PR. So it's going to be very unlikely. 
Okay, uh, let's see what's next. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm going to get back to Romero here. You know, I'm multitasking here. He says, hey, Mark, this is my first time here. I'm a student permit here and didn't declare my common law partner. Is there any way I could still declare my common law partner? Okay, I see what you're saying. So when you applied for your study permit, you had a common law partner, but you didn't declare them. Well, you know, uh, and whether or not they were coming or not. And yeah, that is, that's, that's an issue if you were living with them for, for over a year. Now, in some countries, Romero, common law is not a recognized status for, for, um, uh, for spouses. So uh, it's not fatal, let's put it that way. But, uh, you know, and your study permit has already been issued, but I would definitely on your subsequent application, I would definitely correct it. I would definitely correct it. Well, let me see. That's hard too, right? Because technically once you've left and if it's the Philippines you're coming from, um, you know, you're that common law partner, uh, it's, it becomes extremely difficult to maintain that common law relationship and, and transform it into a conjugal without a lot of explanation. And, uh, and your situation coming to study in Canada could potentially be uh, a, a, an argument <clears throat> why you're not together, especially at, when visas are so hard to come by in, in the Philippines. So Romero, that's a tricky one. I wish that your agency or whoever you use would have understood the complexities of this because yeah, not disclosing a common law partner could be seen as misrepresentation. Um, but it's more a matter of, the definition of what common law is. Um, that's the tricky part. I recommend you book a consult, Romero. And I know I'm saying this to you guys a lot, but I'll be honest, it's really, really dangerous for me to say, oh, do this or that specifically when people have specific advice they're seeking uh, because I just don't have all the facts, okay? All right. Um, okay, Sherry, Sherry Blackman says, hopefully they'll draw a CEC or non-specific, have a CRS score of 493. Fingers crossed. Okay. Any word? I'll do a quick little check here. Anyone? Nope. I don't see any draws. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we have here coming up. Okay. It looks like we have another one from Odili. Another super from Odili. Let's see if we can find this. All right. What's our next question here? Um, okay. It says, I'm sorry. I forgot to add that I have a job with my open work permit. The side hustle is just an addition to what my current job. Is it okay for me to go ahead with the YouTube channel or any Etsy shop? Yeah, if you're on an open work permit, um, you know, YouTube and Etsy is not something that would require a medical. Um, and ultimately, your open work permit is just that, open. But your spouse who's on the, the closed work permit, the specific employer-specific one, that's something I would shy away from. All right. Okay, let's see here. Um... Okay. One thing I like about this is that I, uh, my new, my new system, it bogs down a little bit, but it actually has the ability for me to post comments. At least in this world, I can post comments to Facebook and YouTube, which is, which is great. <laughs> okay. All right. Once again, we are multitasking here. Let's see what else we've got. And remember, if I miss your question, um, there may be reasons why I skip through it. It may just not be something that uh, fits well with our live Q&A model. Okay. Um, okay. Ashatosh, good to see you. He says, hello, Mark. After receiving an ITA, what documents need to be submitted for work experience if a person is currently working? Uh, to whomsoever concerned certificate? Yeah. Understand this, you guys, this is why I created the express entry course. This is why Ashatosh. And um, I strongly encourage you, if you've got your ITA and anybody that's received ITAs, to subscribe to the course or come over and actually um, retain us through our uh, collaborative review model. It's a direct lawyer to client collaboration where we walk through every single process of the, of, of the, the preparation and submission of the application with you. Um, this collaborative review, there's no middle people. It's just us and you via um, uh, a, a, basically a Zoom screen share. And we use file sharing uh, folders to upload documents to. But we go through this in detail to make sure that, you, not, that nothing is missed. And I'll give you an example. My one client that has the, um, uh, the, the questions about the, whether or not a, a licensed practical nurse 
that certif- certification issued by the, you know, the professional body in, um, for example, Ontario, whether or not that gets her the extra 50 points. Well, she assumed it did. And she answered the question that way. And that's how she got her invitation to apply as well as um, some other, you know, some other questions about the length of her study, which, you know, she was prepared to hire us. Um, but going through it, I took some extra time with her during the consult just to make sure. And we found that she actually didn't have the points that she had, um, that she had claimed in her profile. So we had to decline the invitation. Um, but yeah, these are the kinds of things. This is the level of detail that we go through. But in your situation, what documents need to be submitted for work experience if you're currently working? Well, it's the same as anyone. The, the reference letter is a, is a letter that states that you're currently employed as well as all of the other information, hours of work, the start date, um, the most important stuff, the, the duties and responsibilities, your wage, all of those things are in there. And we have tons of resources to help make sure that you're doing it right, including instructions on what to do if your letter isn't perfect. And it needs to be perfect, Ashtosh. Okay. Um, okay, so this one here, Justin John, I'm absolutely going to ring the triangle here because you want to ask about inadmissibility if case charged against a person. When will the, he be uh, the d- deportation? After the hearing, thanks for the answer. Um, it takes time for the Canada Border Service Agency to uh, actually... Um, work through the process of finding inadmissibility, criminal inadmissibility, but it depends upon the seriousness of the charge. So Justin, I recommend that you, um, that you book a consult and we can sort that out with you. Hopefully you've got counsel that's helping you with your enforcement matter. Um, <laughs> Cher says, what's my prediction for the CRS today? Oh my goodness, you guys. Okay, this is one that we could take hours trying to decipher, right? So we know that the last one was 3,300, okay? And the one before that, if we look here, the one before that was um, 893. So we know that off the top right here, we've got over 4,000. You can see 4,000, what do we got here? Like 1,100, 1,200 around there. Three, four, I can add. Yeah, about 4,200, 4,200. 4,200 around there. When we add these up, these are both of the ones that are reflected in um, in the actual round of invitation. You can see this was February the 1st, and this is the way it looked uh, before the February the 1st draw, so they didn't update it. So we know that like over 4,000 were pulled out, um, and uh, you can see here from 490, because of the previous draws and how high this is, there were fewer people in it. But we still had one, two, three, a little over three, and then, of course, a little bit into here that were pulled out in those draws. But we still have a ton of people at this level. So if they were to do a no program specified draw, I think it's probably going to, like, it could get down to about 488, but it just depends. It's been two weeks now, right, since the last draw. So it could be 488 if it was no program specified. I think if it was CEC, I think it could drop down to the low 480s or maybe even 470s. That's possible. Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of kind of where I see things happening. And of course, if they did another FSW, then you know it's going to drop down lower than what they have here. It's probably going to drop down to, I'd say, maybe, four, maybe 487, 488, just because there's so many people that are you know, up into that level that are FSW. And a lot of people that are CEC in Canada have foreign work experience. And so you'll see some people received an invitation uh, through the federal skilled worker, um, even though they also had Canadian experience class. So those are some of the patterns that we saw. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, uh, Okay, Addy says, is it true that international students cannot change courses and institutions again in Canada? No, that is not true. And once again, I will show you guys, if you are not aware of this, not only do I have the express entry course, but I also have the study permit course. And uh, this study permit course is just as comprehensive, goes through just as many things as the express entry course. And it literally gives you an education on what you need to do um, to make sure that your study permit application is being prepared properly the first time. But it goes through a lot of different aspects of the process, strategy, it talks about um, 
uh, some of the, the main pitfalls. It gives very detailed advice and guidance on creating study plans and all of the essential you know, tools that you need. Tutorials, checklists, templates, sample documents, all of it is in there. So I encourage you to, to uh, subscribe to that. It's in the description below as well. And so the short answer is no, you can change an institution. And um, it's, and, you know, it's, it's hard because ultimately the, um, <laughs> yeah, I'll just slide over here. How long did it take me to type this up? Okay, change your post-secondary school in your account. If you need to let us know anytime you change your post-secondary school to do this, this is how you do it, right? So this is the actual link. And what I'll do is, because now I can post it in here, I'm going to change how to change how to change schools in Canada. I'll just do that and I'll drop it in. Aha, I'm into the comments now. <laughs> so I'll leave that link for you guys. Okay, let's jump back here and see what is next. Okay, and we'll flip back here. And Odili, you're very welcome. Okay. Um, Okay, this is a good question. So, um, so uh, Tasia says, what happens if you obtain a CLB5 in writing and reading um, in the section for TCF, but you get a CLB7 in speaking and listening? Do we get points for individual sections? So yes, you do. It depends on which one is your primary, which one's your secondary. And all of that is broken down in the comprehensive ranking systems uh, scoring breakdown. So if you look here right off the bat, I'm assuming English is probably your first language. And you, so you get points for um, official language proficiency uh, right here, okay? <clears throat> but as you go down here, you'll see, skill, we'll get to the detailed here. Give me one second, point breakdown. Okay, so age, education, official language. Okay, so you get points for your first official language. That's where all the big points come from. But then you also, as a principal applicant, can get extra points for your second official language. And you can see um, the maximum points for each ability, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Six with a spouse, to uh, <clears throat> six if you have a spouse, or six without a spouse. So that's for each ability. And each one is, is basically um, broken down to, to here. Okay, like you can see the points are, are broken down. And so... Um, let's just go down here a little bit further. So yes, there are extra points. And then ultimately, if you go down to where you're really asking, which is the other category, let's pull this up here. Wow, they've got a lot. So these additional points you can see here for these bonus points, okay, you have to meet them in all of the language abilities, okay? So if you're trying to get 25 points, then you need to score an NCLC 7 or higher on all four French. Um, you need to do that, plus at least a 4 in English. So the 7 you have to hit um, if, you are, if you want any of these bonus points. But for the points awarded for, for ex, basically for uh, a second, um, uh, so you've got your primary and then your second, uh, second language, official language. So second official language right here, you can see... Um, yeah, six with a spouse, you can get up to six extra points with each of those abilities to a maximum of 22, okay? And this one is a maximum of 24 because they pull some of your points away and give them to a spouse. So, um, yeah, so six, up to six if, you're, if your score is perfect to an extra 24 points that's available. So if you only did, you know, so well in, in two of them, um, you know, you still get points for those when it comes to the second official language. All right. We're diving in deep today, aren't we, guys? Okay. Um, let's see. Natish says, oh, thanks, Natish. For those who have questions regarding the electronic application of PR process, I recommend getting Mark's course. It will answer 99 out of 100 of any questions you have. 100% worth it. I will give you an applause, Natish. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And what Natish is referring to, and there's a link in the description, is the Express Entry course. And uh, what he was referring to in terms of 99% of the questions, yes. And why? Because once again, because of, there are over 10 hours of on-demand video content. And each of these sections covering learning the basics, starting with your Express Entry profile, completing the profile, 
Um, and then we have a section on uh, the EAPR and there's sections for whether you have a spouse or whether you have a, a sp without a spouse or an accompanying spouse, as well as the EAPR uh, sections for the principal applicant, spouse, and we have sections for any dependent children. And each of these are individual lessons on demand. You can use, you can look at whatever videos you need assistance with, the document checklist, um, mastering your documents. And we have an individual video chock full of, uh, you know, sample documents, instructions, tips, all that kind of stuff for each document that you're they're uploading within the, the, the course. So thank you so much. Uh, Nitish for that shout out. I really appreciate it. And I'll be honest, I'm surprised that more people don't take advantage of it. Instead, they'll spend hours going online, you know, getting not terribly helpful information uh, from people they don't even know. And um, anyways, there we go. Okay. Let's wrap it up with one last question. <clears throat> Let's see here. Okay, Ankit says, created profile with my girlfriend and she only mentioned Canadian education in her express entry profile. So while giving education details in PR post ITA, does she have to give her Indian bachelor's degree too and provide documents for it? Once again, Ankit, this is something we cover in the course. Um, when it comes to what you put into the study history section, um, you can include the education that you want to claim points for. But absolutely, I provide a letter of explanation explaining why I didn't include it because I didn't get an invitation. Uh, I didn't, like, I'm assuming she must have gotten a master's, right? Excuse me, I'm assuming she must have got a master's in Canada, Ankit. Um, if you have a master's level credential, then you don't need to demonstrate the other, the other stuff. But I always include a letter of explanation if I don't include it, just so that an officer isn't confused. And I also include it in the personal history section. For most people, it will have still have occurred within the last 10 years. Um, but yeah, I make sure that I, that I fully disclose it at some point. Now, maybe her bachelor's degree, um, if, you, if you, she didn't get a bachelor's degree in Canada, then I'm, you know, I'm assuming she would want to get an educational credential assessment. But if she didn't need that or wasn't getting any extra points and, you know, is she accompanying? That's the, the question. So you created your profile with your girlfriend and Ankit, I don't know, is she like a common law spouse or is she the principal applicant or you can see all these questions. So basically I just um, ring the bell and say slide over and book a consult and we can chat and discuss all of these things. It's super easy, you guys. All you have to do is click on speak to a lawyer, choose the lawyer. So for example, if you want to book a consult with me, click on the link. It pulls it up here and uh, it looks like, yes, I have time available tomorrow. So go check that out. I think it's in the morning. Yeah, I've got some point uh, consults available tomorrow morning. So, but they are going to go fast. I'm taking tomorrow off and, uh, and then Friday I do have more availability. So both Thursday and Friday. And then you can see there's nothing available the week after because I am taking a week and we're going up to the mountains um, for the first time ever with our family. We've been chalking away little bits of money here and there. <clears throat> excuse me, and we are going to go skiing uh, for the better part of that week. And I'm really looking forward to it. But I'll still be in range, still be in contact range. Okay, I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. I don't see there's any other super chats. Um, as always, this Q&A, this live Q&A that we're doing, it is sponsored by Healthy Immigration Law. And that is my law firm. And if you're wondering, what is this all about, Mark, this law firm of yours? Well, we talk a lot about, I've had, I can't tell you how many people that I've had discussions with that don't know that I'm a Canadian immigration lawyer who um, don't understand how that, you know, they can hire us. And so if you slide over to our firm website, you guys absolutely need to get over here and look at it because it is chock full. Our blog page alone is full of every kind of updated blog instruction you could find. It's searchable. So you can search by keyword. And there is an absolute ton of blogs up to date, all the latest changes to immigration, our explanations, you know, kind of pulling the curtain back a little bit, all of that. You definitely don't want to miss that. Um, but then we have tons of other information, you know, legal help. What if you get your application rejected, which is, it happens. Or if there's an application that is stalled out, we've got writs of mandamus. Um, and then the whole world of misrepresentation. So um, you can get legal help from us. Um, we have a whole section on business immigration, but family sponsorship, if you want to visit, work, study, 
or immigrate, all of the information is in here. And we highly, highly recommend that you come and check out the website and learn about us and our team. And uh, you'll see that we have right now, we've got um, four lawyers that work within our team. And I'll just open this up here. So myself, Alicia, uh, and you can see our locations. I'm in Lethbridge, Alicia's in Calgary, uh, Chanel's in Toronto, and, and Cedric is based out of Ottawa. And Igor, congratulations to Igor, just passed his last exam, his torts exam. And so he is now in the process of waiting for, well, I shouldn't say he passed it, he wrote it. And he feels pretty confident about it. Igor's a pretty smart guy. So uh, we, we have ver very little doubt he's going to pass it. And he is going to be um, starting as an articling student with the firm here in the next few months once he gets everything officially completed. So we're really excited for that. That'll make five of us immigration lawyers. And uh, yeah, it's uh, we love what we do. And we believe that our, our the way in which we work with our clients is just, yeah, we love it. So... All right. Thank you so much, you guys. And uh, yeah, I didn't see a draw. So I guess we'll assume at least at this stage that the, the draws are not going to come through. Um, but I'm expecting, oh, you know what? In an hour or two, if it hasn't come through, then I guess maybe we can write it off. But we should, I'm still holding out that we should see it. All right. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Mr. Smash. <laughs> Mr. Smash says, someday I want to assist you in your firm. Well, you will note that Chanel, who's working in the firm, is a recent immigrant. Uh, Igor is a recent immigrant. Prem, who is our intake specialist, is actually on a work permit. His wife is going to school to complete her uh, her nursing. And, uh, and uh, you know, Cedric and Alicia and I, we're, we're kind of homegrowners here. But we love, yeah, we love working with um, you guys that are immigrating to Canada because you guys actually care. You understand the process and, and you are the best employees when we're looking to hire new people for the firm. And of course, we have Phil down in the Philippines who is helping with some video editing for us. All right. Take care, guys. Have a wonderful Wednesday afternoon. And uh, tomorrow, I'll just let you know that if you have not, and this is the last little piece I guess I, I should bring up, which we haven't talked about yet. If you go to the link, um, the description, you'll see that we have our, let's see if we can find it, do, 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 do. Um, weekly newsletter. Uh, where is it? Oh, I don't see it in here. I thought we had the link to the community group, but apparently we don't. Oh, for goodness sakes. Okay, we'll need to, and I'm not missing it, am I? Uh, book and English content, subscribe to the newsletter, the courses, the podcast. Oh, yes. And check out the podcast, the Canadian Immigration Podcast, and then follow us on social. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure where the community group is. Oh, do you know what? I know why, because I'm not looking at the most recent one. <laughs> I should be pulling up this one. Oh, boy. Today... It's one of those days, guys, one of those days. There's the community group. Okay, let's open this up. If you have not yet subscribed, tomorrow, you guys, I'm going to post today, but we took a poll as to when we were going to um, to do the lives. And so uh, we're going to do a live tomorrow in the community group. It'll be in the evening. Um, I can't remember ultimately what which one uh, won, the, won the day, if it was 7 or 8 p.m., uh, but uh, but we will be I'm going to be doing a live exclusively in the community group. So if you have not yet subscribed, head on over there, subscribe because there'll be far fewer people in there right now as we get ramped up. And uh, yeah, make sure that you join. Oh, there's a link right there at the top of the page. <laughs> join the community group. It's going to be awesome. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Take care, it's Mr. Smash. And um, oh, Amu Amu's coming up. She says she says. Licensed practical nurses don't get that 50 points. System shows that 50 points, but it won't add up to your total points. I have that 50 in my profile, but it is not adding to my total score. There's an applause. Thank you, Amu. That is my belief as well. Okay. Um, okay, Tails. I'll, okay. Uh, uh, Talis. All right. He says, I called three different doctors here in Brazil, and one of them told me that the exam would expire three months after taking it. And the other two said that it expires one year after taking it. It's one year. The doctor who says it expires after three months is just trying to take more money from you. So that's one year. Okay, wrapping it up. <laughs> take care. Thanks for joining me in another Express Entry Live Q&A.
And yes, other areas of immigration were definitely covered. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow over in the community group and it'll be in the evening. So see you all then. Take care.